Never Lucky was able to destroy Mez, looking, making him look like a little piece of paper. So he really struggled to have the single target healing. He needed to keep Mez alive off the back of the grapple weapon coming in from Cola. We'll have to see if Never Lucky can get aggressive or Method Orange has potentially figured something out. Yeah, let's we'll see if they've figured out the strategy here because this grapple weapon is going to be devastating against Method Orange. Although Colo's mana efficiency has been, I would say, lackluster at best throughout this tournament. So if Method Orange can hold out for that late game advantage, it's definitely a win condition on their side. Yeah, definitely, no question about it. Zach getting low definitely could be a pressure point here for Method Orange. And what we wanted to see from Method Orange yesterday, once they got Colo out of mana, they have to get the pressure rolling onto Zach, which is really gonna tax Colo's mana and force Zach to potentially back off a little bit in this matchup, get off Mez for a second, allow C to a moment where he can really catch up. But for now, the primary objective for uh, Trill is definitely gonna be running Colo out of mana as soon as possible. Mez getting bursted down just a little bit, grapple weapon not allowing him to get that death strike off and that is one of the counters we talked about where the class can disarm a death knight that limits his self-healing so when you have all your burst damage available if you can grapple weapon you can disarm a death knight that's when you can really get some stuff rolling i like that both felito and mez have adopted the lichborn honor talent so they can get damage reduction every minute rather than every three minutes that the icebound fortitude would provide i think it's a smart decision to exchange during these burst windows that each team's cleave brings to the table Trill's mana rifts, though, are an inevitability to burn Colo out of the fight, which is what puts them on such a small clock to find a kill. Colo's actually just getting destroyed right now by Trill and barely able to even stay. Has to use Life Cocoon to just a solo demon hunter. Zack now gets swapped. Mez is still falling behind. Grapple weapon denying the death strikes. c is crowd controlled. Colo moves in for the ending the match, but walks into a triple Trill stun. Welcome to Trillville. Yeah, but still, Mez in some trouble. Earthen Wall Totem will keep Mez alive for now. Colo could potentially have to run away, and he does. He gets the crowd control on Sidhu. Has to really think twice, and I like this pressure on the Zach. This is what we wanted to see from Method Orange. The need to find the mana rifts on Colo, but also just pressure Zach, make him run away. And these are the opportunities where the Rising Sun Kick, Mortal Wounds will fall. Sidhu can empower his healing without that healing reduction, but Mez could still be in some trouble. Touch of Death gets committed by Zach. Leg sweep onto Sidhu, and Darkness gets traded out by Trill to keep his team alive. Yeah, Method Orange just need to exchange cooldown one by one to try and take down Mez. Zach now on the back foot needs to buy some time. Mez is still just taking a beating. He needs to stay alive just a tiny bit longer. I mean, Method Orange took, or sorry, Never Lucky took Method Orange down yesterday, but it was off the back of basically nothing left in the tank on mana. Good crowd control engagement here. Mez is in trouble. All three members collide. Mez catches the Spearling Totem. Sidhu keeps him in the fight for a tad bit longer. They just need the tiniest bit further. Colo's almost completely burnt out. If they can keep it behind the train, maybe Mez just dies to the pressure. Bolito and Zach are dishing out. Sidhu has to trink it out, connecting a couple of big heals in that earthen wall totem. Colo gets gripped into the triple stun. Zach gets bursted down. Colo's totally tapped. Method Orange have this game. Yep, they are at the finish line. They just need to take down Never Lucky, survive maybe one more setup that they have available. They don't have too many tools, though. Method Orange, they really don't have many answers. Triple Leg Sweep comes in from Zach. Good damage on Mez. They have to hold on just a little bit longer. This is what we saw yesterday from Never Lucky. They were able to get to this point and close out the game. Paralysis on Sidhu. Mez still trying to kite away. A lot of counter pressure, though, on Zach forcing him to run away as he gets gripped back into the fight. Life Cocoon will keep Never Lucky in it, but Mez still in a little bit of danger. Life Cocoon saves Zach, but for how much longer? Sidhu, surprisingly, is now out of mana. The damage isn't stopping. Mez is still low. Zach is still low. It's anyone's match here in game number one. This is an elimination. Best of five. The loser of this goes home in third place. Method Orange want a good position so they can potentially move up in the ladder, but so do Never Lucky. If they can secure a fourth place top finish as well, it would be so beneficial. Zach holding on by a thread. There's no mana left. Colo can't even get in the line of sight. He snared so much. Zach has to support himself. How much longer can he do it? Bissafiri denies the kill. Zidu's just in midfield chilling. There's really no pressure yet. They grapple weapon Trill. Uh, I mean, it's gonna stop them from dying, but that's their win condition. Yeah, definitely a difficult situation for Never Lucky to be in when you have to start trading out that offense for defense. 
Now Zach with Touch of Death rolling. I don't know if he has enough time though. Colo getting low. Life Cocoon does get traded out. Trill gets that major objective. Colo, no mana, no Life Cocoon. Zach getting low. Do they have the Touch of Karma? They do. Zach manages to stay in it, but there's just no healing available for Colo whatsoever. Imprisonment on Zach. He's still in a lot of trouble. Has to port out of line of sight. Colo gets gripped away. Zach left all alone. Diffuse magic. Uh, maybe enough for him to survive, but with Colo on no mana, I don't know if Never Lucky will ever stabilize again. Well, look at Swap 2 and Burst it, ducking around the corner, healing with absolutely nothing left in the tank. Any amount of damage should be enough for Method Orange to push Never Lucky over the edge. Zach has no defense. Colo has no defense. Cedar's crowd controlled. Maybe they can go for one more push. Triple leg sweep. Cedar trinkets out. Zach's on the run, but Trill's on the hunt. Zach manages to get around the corner, but he's not going to be able to support himself. Trill is looking to close. Triple crowd control secured, and Method Orange claim the kill in game number one. This looks totally different than we saw yesterday. <laughs> they weren't able to do checks all of the same boxes, right? They have very similar roles. Uh, it, it's interesting to not see Never Lucky stick to their guns, but if you are going to try to do something a little bit off color, it is going to be in this second game, right? They still will have some breathing room after that. You don't want to be doing it when you're completely with your back against the wall. They want to be able to take this one and tie up the series. Yeah, and one of the problems with the Warrior is he doesn't have that same sort of self efficiency as the Windwalker Monk, but good pressure on Mez very early on. C2 forced a trinket, Earthen Shield Totem dropped as well to keep Mez alive as he's trying to kite. And one of the things as well for Mez is with the Chains of Ice, he's gonna be super effective. Can you just go down instantly? Never lucky, they have such a tremendous amount of pressure. Method Orange has basically burned down every single one of their defensive cooldowns already. Aggressively, the Warrior is going to bring devastation. It's just defensively that it is inferior, maybe mobility as well to the Windwalker. It's more uh, risk versus reward, I guess, with Zach on that Arms Warrior. It was a big push early on. It netted them basically every major objective. The last line of defense will be Trill's Darkness, although now Zach falling behind as a result. We're seeing that lack of weakness. Colo caught and stunned. Mana Rifts connect. That is going to be the late game win for Trill if they just maintain that. Zach gets stunned up. Colo exchanges with the Life Cocoon. We do see the Disarm run as well for the Arms Warrior. A nice countermeasure against the Unholy Death Knight's Death Strike. Mez trying to kite. Gets knocked and denied on his Wraith Walk. So you do get stun locked. It's looking decent for Never Lucky aggressively, but they're on a short clock. Look at Zach. He's just waddling as if Mez is a Frost Mage, keeping him rooted up and snared. His uptime on Mez has been really limited. What Mez has been doing is just running back and forth. Keep Chains of Ice on Zach. Guess what? If he doesn't have charge, he doesn't have a stun, Mez is going to be able to easily just walk away from him, avoid a lot of the damage, just like we see now. Zach can get to him with a charge, but now Mez reverses running away. Zach luckily has the blade storm, but after that, that's when really Mez's kiting is going to come uh -oh. in huge, but he gets low. A lot of pressure still on Mez. Sidhu Khan do a stun. Darkness has to get dropped out as Mez was in execute range. A really scary moment for Method Orange. Death's advance prevents Mez from being knocked out of the darkness, taking a page out of Swapsy's book to make sure that darkness defense allows Mez to survive. That could have been the end of the game if Mez had no presence of mind to save that, but now he is disarmed, unable to death strike. Sidhu has to save him. He's not cast heals he gets stunned Mez is still low on health oh, Zach no! wants to close it out aggressively this comp pays off <laughs> never lucky put a point on the board in game number two <laughs> never question at BlizzCon it, it was huge to use that Moonkin use that that demon hunter together but now it does seem like a lot of the wizards are going to be paired up together we haven't seen Method Orange fully utilize Sam I am yet but never lucky going to try to use the composition that got them one win on the board to get on match point He's already under fire here by Never Lucky. He cannot afford to make a mistake as was made in game number two if they want to stay alive in the tournament. Huge damage still coming through from Never Lucky as Sidhu's locked out of the match. Needs to be careful. Healing Tide Totem down. Consistent healing, but he needs to get a chain heal off, reposition far away from Valido's potential incoming interrupts. Instead, trying to activate some immunities to that and stabilize the team. Triple stun for Trill. Good secure here. Capacitator Totem to follow it up. With no way of the Crane, Colo's recovery will be limited, but maybe he doesn't care about recovering. It's all about chasing down Mez. Mez is playing a lot more defensive, utilizing that Chains of Ice and repositioning in a way to try and avoid Zack. But with Bladestorm immuning the Chains of Ice, Zack is getting uptime and Mez is getting chopped. 
Yeah, Mez is trying to run away, but still never lucky. They have a lot of pressure in this matchup so far. They managed to find Mez with Grapple. the grapple weapon. No trinket available, almost in execute range. Sidu forced overlapping ascendance with Spirit Link Totem. Gets interrupted. Mez still not out of it yet as he looks to kite away from Zack, but Zack just goes in battle stance. Full Zug Zug. Darkness gets dropped out by Trill. The last line of defense as Sidu finally connects some heals to keep Mez in the game. Very close call for Method Orange here. Never lucky, almost putting them on match point, and perhaps they will moving forward. Trill, though, has still secured that mana advantage, which is of utmost importance, which is basically the only thing that they're winning on at this point. Zack has multiple defensives to burn through to stay on target. Earthen Wall towed him down. Unlikely that we see Mez go down for a few seconds until that defense has faded. They just need one good power control chain. Never lucky have this. The next wave of the crane, if they can save the manatee, push in with it with a grapple weapon or a disarm. I mean, they could just kill him here and now. They've got good crowd control. They just need to stay on target. Zach leaps over. Not able to make it completely there. Sharpened blade available. Way of the crane up in 10. The pressure is mounting. Trill's doing his best to stall. Mana rift connects. Colo might not have mana for it. They need to get a kill with it. They've still got pressure. Zach is still a way of the crane available. They need to do it here and now. If they don't get a kill on Mez within maybe the next 20 seconds, it's going to be curtains for Never Lucky. I have to agree with that, but Mez still in a little bit of danger. Zach, no but die but the sword. Mez getting low. Stormbolt on Sidu. Almost in execute range, but they're turning around the pressure onto Zach. Mana Rift gets dropped on the Zach just for that percentage-based damage. Polo into the Mana Rift. He has to drink it out. Life Cocoon on Zach. Will keep him in the fight. Sidu pushes forward. Lands a full hex onto Colo, but with that Life Cocoon, Zach manages to stay alive. Asphyxiates done. Mez looking to really get aggressive, but might get punished here. A full fear coming in. Intimidating shout from Zach. Crowd controlling up Sidu and Trill. Mez still left by himself to survive during this time. Polo getting more crowd control. It's do or die. Who will fall first in this fight? Will it be Mez or will it be Zach? We're about to find out. Colo does not have the man as a way of the crane. He's relying on his team to deal enough damage to get the kill. Perhaps with one interrupt, Mez could fall. The pressure is still mounting as Mez barely holds on. No defense for some time on either side. Colo recovers, but a hex by Sidu could potentially close this game out. At the same time, Mez is still low on health. It's very close to call at this point in game number three as both of these teams face elimination. A lot of points on the line to secure their spots to that land to the spring finals later this year. Mez is trying to kite, avoid damage, and drag it out for the late game. Trill has secured that mana rift advantage, but now Sidu is totally tapped. Fortunately, his defense is going to be available if Never Lucky can't get a kill soon. Yeah, Cole, he has a life cocoon, activates it onto Zach. Now they're pushing in, trying to take Mez down with the grapple weapon. Stun onto Sidu. Mez still has to kite. He has to be able to get away. Cole using the last little bit of his defensive cooldowns with that life cocoon. Nothing really available. Mez getting low. Anyone could fall during these moments. Sidu has to keep him alive. And Sidu actually has the spearling totem, the last little bit of his mana available to keep Mez in the fight if he needs it. That's the last line of defense for Method or and Zach getting low as well. Which one's going to fall first, Sid? Rallying cry may not be enough as Zach is likely to fall here. Landy, a fear though, maybe oh, close. 1% health. They've still got damage. Bolito trinkets. He's not able to close it. Trill denies the kill. Zach goes all in with 1% health remaining. Almost manages to take down Mez, but almost is not enough. Going head to head with the reigning BlizzCon champions. Now, Method Orange only needs one more win to get back into the good graces of the grand final. Never lucky. Going to try to stop him in their tracks and bring this one to a game number five. And right out the gate, we are trading blows. Yep, very early on, damage is exchanged as Zach and Felito move towards Mez. Mez, once again, we're going to be looking for him to just keep Chains of Ice up on Zach, up on Valido, really try to limit their uptime. But as long as Zach has those gap closers, he has charge, he has Bladestorm, he will be able to put out a lot of pressure. Colo getting imprisoned on his way of the crane. Not a lot of healing for Zach. Nice stun lock there, forcing out the Life Cocoon, Trinket, and way of the crane already from Colo. A mess under fire. I mean, both teams exchanging huge de defense in their lineup. It's match point for Method Orange. The pressure is on, and Never Lucky lock in their risky arms warrior composition. The Windwalker definitely more stable overall, but Never Lucky, I guess they don't have the practice on it. They want to rely more on just overwhelming their opponents. And in the current meta, they're battling an uphill fight in that regard. 
Trill still keeping a level head and consistency with those mana rifts is likely to secure at least safe victory for Method Orange if they can't find a kill before Colo is out of mana. The main thing with the mana rifts is that they deny Way of the Crane. It really puts Colo on a clock. He's likely to have to just use Way of the Crane as soon as it's available. Zach using Glyre's Medallion aggressively. Colo looks like he wants to get some crowd control. Sidu's locked down. Mez is the target. He makes a trade, but will that be enough? Sidu gets stunned out of it. It's the triple stun lock combo by Never Lucky as they look to try and battle back to a game number five. There's still two major objectives, Trill's Darkness and Sidu's Spirit Link Totem. As soon as those objectives are out of the way, Mez will be an exposed target, but they need mana to push for those. With how much mana Colo has remaining, he's only really going to get one more way of the crane. Yeah, Super Frogs waiting in the grand finals, potentially for Method Orange, if they can close out this game. Never lucky. They want to keep their tournament lives available, but things are looking a little bit grim. Colo's mana not doing great right now, already around 30%. He only has one, potentially two of those way of the cranes left, and that's really the extra little bit of push that we normally need from Never Lucky to actually land a kill onto a very durable class like the Death Knight of Mez. Sidu now caught into a full intimidating shout. Colo pulls the trigger as he moves forward, trying to take Mez down. What is Mez going to do? Looks like he's just going to exchange blow for blow. Sidu does have the Spearling Totem if he needs it. Earthen Shield Totem. Mez in execute range. No Death Strike. Darkness gets dropped off by Trill, but a beautiful Ring of Peace knocks him out. And Sidu forced to trade out the Spearling. But now Mez, in desperation, really doesn't have anything left. Colo has to get another way of the crane. If he can somehow get enough mana to do it, they'll push Mez, Mez over. Nice hex. But I don't think they're going to get enough mana to see that. Maybe Colo just punches without way of the crane. Just That's what he's doing right now, at least. Just adding in the tiniest bit more damage. I mean, it's do or die. You've got to kill Mez here and now. You're totally tapped on mana. There's nothing left. They secure crowd control. They get the Glyrus medallion. Now they could win with intimidating shouts. Sidu's going to have to pre-tremor on Zach's intimidating shouts. Maybe they don't even need it. Mez is still down at half, desperately trying to kite, but the entire team of Never Lucky is just dying. There's no mana. They disarm Mez. Where's the crowd control on Sidu? They have to stop him from crashing in these healing waves. There's no crowd control. Mez is still floundering even without crowd control. Imagine they land an interrupt, put C2 behind, with Colo as well. It's totally tapped. Triple stun secured by the entire team of Method Orange. Colo just punching away even without way of the crane. Can they take Mez down? Will Lord Mez fall before Never Lucky in game number four? It's looking like he's not going to. Zach on the ropes with nothing. Leaps, tries to cross the map, gets gripped back to Mez, and Mez KOs him. Method Orange 3 1. Never Lucky advancing to the finals. Orange feed versus the fake zebras we're all tied up one and one who is going to find themselves on match point who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament keep in mind folks we're doing a brand new thing you have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for azeroth 